Just off the coast of Southern California, the five islands that make up Channel Islands National Park harbor a variety of distinctive plants and animals. One of these animals, the diminutive island fox, has drawn much attention in recent years. Weighing in at around five pounds, these unique canines, which live only on the Channel Islands, have made a dramatic comeback. The island fox has made one of the fastest recoveries of an endangered species. Almost extinct just 10 years ago, they are now thriving because of an intensive recovery program. The recovery of island fox populations is at the center of a broader program to ecologically restore Channel Islands National Park. Scientists and land managers have intervened to remove certain non-native species of plants and animals introduced by humans. The scientists believe these introduced species are harmful to the overall biological diversity of the islands. They also reintroduced other near-extinct species, such as the bald eagle, that had vanished from the islands because of human actions. This multifaceted recovery program was made possible through a cooperative effort between the National Park Service and the Nature Conservancy. Uh, we started monitoring uh, populations of island foxes back in the 1990s. And it was a pretty logical thing to pick to monitor because uh, they're very unique. They're the most geographically restricted of all the canid species in the world. They only occur on the Channel Islands. They're one of the smallest canid species. They're no bigger than a house cat. Uh, they're the only carnivore that's unique to California. And they exist at very low population levels. So we were concerned right off the bat that there had been no historical problems with them. In 1993, biologists started monitoring the foxes with annual trapping on San Miguel and Santa Cruz Islands, and initially found high numbers of them. But by 1996, we, we saw that we were in a steep decline both on San Miguel and Santa Cruz, and that decline continued uh, every year till uh, 1999, we were left with uh, 15 foxes on San Miguel and 15 on Santa Rosa. We finally put radio collars on island foxes on San Miguel in 1998, and within two months, we had had foxes killed by golden eagles, which was very unusual. Golden eagles do not occur naturally uh, as breeders on the Channel Islands, never been known to breed here. But here they were, uh, apparently eating foxes on both San Miguel and Santa Cruz. And it, it turns out that there was a breeding population of goldens on the northern Channel Islands. Golden eagles came from the mainland and are decimating fox populations. Too bad for the foxes, but isn't that just nature taking its course? Scientists were concerned because this was indirectly caused by humans. And if you add to that the disappearance of another species, it explains possibly why golden eagles arrived in the 1990s and were able to set up shop on the islands. And that species that was missing for approximately 50 years was the bald eagle. Uh, bald eagles bred on all the northern Channel Islands as well as the southern Channel Islands. So they were the apex, the top predator in the system out there. But they disappeared by 1960 due to the effects of DDT, which was manufactured off of Southern California and made its way into the marine environment and up the food chain, uh, and also direct persecution uh, by humans. And, and so by 1960, we had no more bald eagles on the island. Right now on the Channel Islands, we have a situation that's substantially different from what it was several hundred years ago. Because of human intervention, every island has a history of grazing, and that has caused massive changes in the ecosystems out there. Uh, one of which was uh, the introduction of feral pigs on Santa Cruz Island in the 1850s. Uh, they were originally brought out there to serve as a food source for the ranch, but they went wild. So for the, for the past 150 years, there was a prey source out there that wasn't out there previously. For thousands of years, the highly territorial bald eagle, which didn't typically eat island foxes, 
kept the Golden Eagles off the islands. But with the bald eagle now gone, it opened up the door for the Golden Eagles to take advantage of the feral pigs, as well as the island foxes. So they found an environment very much to their liking, which was not uh, what the native environment was several hundred years ago. And that explains why they were able to make a living out there. And of course, the island fox evolved without uh, one of these diurnal or daytime aerial predators in the sky. They were very vulnerable to predation by golden eagles. And that explains why the, the population declined so quickly once golden eagles started eating island foxes on the three northern islands. In 1999, the Park Service and the Nature Conservancy, who owns a majority of Santa Cruz Island, decided to intervene and take emergency recovery actions. And we knew we had to bring the remaining foxes into captivity in order to prevent golden eagles from completely wiping out these subspecies. And we had to use those captive foxes as the nucleus of a captive breeding program that eventually would repopulate the islands. Park Service and Nature Conservancy biologists additionally initiated a program to live capture and relocate golden eagles from Santa Cruz Island and the adjoining Northern Channel Islands. They have also been working on re-establishing bald eagles back to the Channel Islands. The final component to the recovery program was to eradicate all of the feral pigs. Since 2003, both the Park Service and the Nature Conservancy have been releasing island foxes back to the wild. Together, they release between 70 and 100 foxes on each of three islands. Although this was a very challenging ecological restoration program, it was successful at bringing the island fox back from the brink of extinction. Uh, it's amazing to think about. We were down to 15 foxes on San Miguel in 1999. Now we have over 125 foxes in the wild on that island. And the same is true on Santa Rosa. For Santa Cruz, it's even better. We have uh, over 300 foxes in the wild there. So absolutely, um, the recovery program has worked. And in a fairly short amount of time. There are only a handful of mainland zoos that exhibit island foxes. And the Orange County Zoo is fortunate to have one. The mainland zoo island fox population originated from San Clemente Island, one of the Channel Islands with a stable population of foxes. You can find our male island fox next to the porcupine and turkey vulture exhibit 